Hello, my pretties. Welcome back to the Silver Screen Dudes. I am Lauren Clare, back with you for another review of Agatha All Along, now that we have episode six. I am again solo because Nico is still gallivanting around London at the BFI Film Festival. A good problem to have. Lots of content coming from that. It started to go up today, so check that out if you're interested. Lots of really cool things coming through the festival, so if you're a film buff, you need to get on it. But for now, let's stick with Agatha all along. Let's see if we're still heading in a better direction. What do you guys think? If you agree, disagree, we're really interested to hear what you've got to say. So let us know in the comments below and let's have a chat. Well, we fed that magical 40,000, but we're still on our way to 50. And I continue to ask for your guys' help. I thank all of you who are subscribed, but I still see nearly 90% of you not subscribed to the channel and watching the content. Guys, it's free. It's an easy way for you guys to stay on top of the content that I release and that you're clearly consuming and not subscribing to. So please hit that subscribe button. It helps me so, so much. Please help me reach that 50,000 big landmark. Now back to the video. This episode seems like it's full of twists and layers that blend mythology, magic and the multiverse in intriguing ways. Starting with a bar mitzvah scene is an unexpected but effective way to ground Billy or William's origin story, especially given the strong associations with Jewish mysticism and palmistry. The touch of including palm readers in the bar mitzvah, which leads to Billy's encounter with the fortune teller from the coven, adds an interesting bridge between his religious and magical heritage. So, spoiler alert guys, by the way, I meant to say this at the beginning, so just make sure if you've not seen it to come back to us later. We obviously now know that the original body of William isn't the same person as the soul of Billy, but they've now combined. So even though Billy doesn't have a Jewish heritage, it was an interesting combination considering the the tie-ins with palmistry and the way that that could tie in with the fortune telling witch. Although that doesn't seem to go that much further, it, it was an interesting tie-in and it did start to make that, that origin story and that side of the story make a little bit more sense, I felt. The reveal that Billy and William are the same person and that Billy doesn't remember being Wanda's son is a compelling twist. It helps reconcile the mystery of how Billy fits into Wanda's world, especially since, as mentioned, her children weren't real in the traditional sense in the previous storylines. Joe Locke, who plays Billy slash William, his performance seems to capture his duality well, transitioning between William's identity and Billy's rediscovery of his past. So obviously bar mitzvahs happen when boys turn 13 and bat mitzvahs for girls. So you needed that three year jump really because he was playing a younger boy who was obviously going through this transition and working this out. And then that skip takes us straight back into the character that he is now that we know and that we're used to. So I thought that was pretty well done. I think as a standalone episode of telling his origin story, it's a standout from the series. What do you think? Evan Peters' cameo was a nice inclusion here. We always like a cameo, don't we? Previously, obviously having been Quicksilver and Wanda's brother in previous Avengers films, he also made the cameo as Ralph Bonner in WandaVision. It adds another layer of mystery bringing him into this, but also makes sense to explain to Billy a little bit about his past. The connection is intriguing because it ties back to the larger multiverse narrative, suggesting Billy's journey through the witch's road might be linked to untangling the fabric of the multiverse. His focus on finding Tommy and his belief that Wanda might be dead raises questions about where the story will head and how these parallel realities intersect. So bringing him back is going to be a fan favourite. Any kind of face or cameo or previous character that's been not only in this series but other series linking it back to the multiverse everyone's gonna pop for right i did i think my husband popped a little harder than i did i didn't even realize it was him at first because of his face being on the side and all that. i was like oh yeah so yeah I, I thought that was really nice and a nice way to bring him into the origin story he could come back into it at some point but let's see as we've previously discussed in former episodes the coloration of the production design of, of agatha is really interesting we know that the purple is associated with magic. However, we have noticed before that there's changing colours of the road when it comes to signifying different things. We previously noticed that the coloration changed around the Salem Seven to orangey tones. The more ominous orange and yellow tones might indeed symbolise the darker side of magic, perhaps tied to death or corruption. It could also suggest that Billy's journey is venturing deeper into the more dangerous or ancient form of magic. I'm starting to believe this even more. I think it's definitely signified danger, potentially death, 
but definitely corruption and a dangerous road that they're now heading down. The purple's a little bit more Disney magic, airy fairy, my side of Halloween that I enjoy. But this is getting more ominous now. It's getting dangerous. And for the colours to be similar to what we saw around the Salem Seven, knowing the danger that they could potentially bring, this shows that they're heading down a more dangerous road. And there's obviously a metaphor in that too. Catherine Hahn's portrayal of Agatha is always delightful. And this episode brings out more of her playful, mischievous side while still keeping the tension alive. The chemistry between Billy and Agatha during their confrontation with that semi-improvised energy added an extra layer of depth to their dynamic. Now, as I keep saying, I love Catherine Hahn and I love how she can go from deeply evil to playful to funny because she is hilarious. And a lot of the stuff that she's previously been in, we've been able to see her her improv magic and, and what comes from that. And I think we, we saw little whispers of this. So during that confrontation where we were seeing Billy's perspective of everything it was clear that when she was hanging over him on a chair very similar to this where she was like taunting him almost that he was trying not to laugh and that she was trying not to laugh but yet they both sort of retained their seriousness and I always like seeing that it's not quite a fourth wall break but I always like seeing that dynamic on set because it shows that they've got really good chemistry and I think you get a little pop out of it and a little kick out of it I don't know what do you think I, I really enjoy it another thing that we noticed was that the palm reading witch obviously being the same witch that's in the coven, not saying anything about Billy's past might have been an intentional move to let the mystery unfold gradually from a screenwriting perspective. Perhaps she knew more than she let on, but was bound by certain magical rules or didn't want to interfere with his journey. Or it could suggest that Billy's magical identity was obscured from her sight, either because of his connection to Wanda or because of something about the witch's road itself. Now, this is really interesting because straight away, as soon as you see her face, my question in my head was, why has she not said anything? But I suppose, I mean, she must have seen something, right? Because the reactions that she have and the shock and seeing the, the split lifeline and things like that, she must have known something. She must have known something. She, she couldn't have gone down that line so much without at least indicating that something was different or that she'd seen something of him. I don't know. I, I feel like it's, it's a little bit of a screenwriting error there. But again, I think this episode and the previous episode has started to ask, answer questions that we've previously asked because still it's a bit all over the place. Things are starting to tie together. And again, like I've said before, it feels like a beautiful jigsaw puzzle with all of these pieces that just don't fit together. They are starting to fit together, but it just feels like the storytelling still a little bit all over the place. So what are your thoughts on this week's episode? I really enjoyed it. I think the story coming together, the fact that it was an origin story was told really well. And it obviously ties a lot of things together, but the storytelling is still a little bit all over the place. I feel like if it follows this same pattern, then we'll find out more in the next few episodes as to why things haven't made sense or why certain things have been done. But we still can't go back and change what was wrong with the initial episodes. But I still want to give it to the end of the season to really give it a good rundown. So what do you think? Again, let us know in the comments, hit that subscribe button, give us a like, let us know what you're thinking, let us know what you think of the reviews and check out all the other content we've got coming out. Everything's coming back from the BFI festival now. Nico's working hard on that. He's making up for lost time. Keep with us guys, come back next week and we'll see you for episode seven.